Welcome to a new episode of the podcast. Vox Agent is made by AI for business executives that work with AI. Okay, so let's unpack this. We're diving deep today into something the sources are calling well, truly foundational technology, OpenAI's Sora 2. And for those of you working with visual communication, this isn't just some incremental update. It's really being framed as a significant inflection point in how digital media gets made. Right. We seem to be moving past that era of, you know, novelty AI video uh -huh. and into an age of production ready, almost synthetic reality. It's fascinating, isn't it, how quickly the ground has shifted. Our mission here really for you, the learner, is to give you that executive shortcut. You need to grasp Sora 2's immediate strategic, operational, and yeah, competitive implications. Mm. Honestly, if you don't understand the economics driving this tech, you're probably already falling behind. Absolutely. And the research seems pretty clear that this huge strategic shift is really driven by two core breakthroughs happening at once. One, there's this just exponential leap in photorealistic output. Mm. I mean, the videos genuinely look like they could have been filmed professionally. Really do. And two, the user gets way more granular control over the content. Right. You feel like you're actually directing the scene, not just uh, tossing out a vague concept. And it's that combination, right? The high fidelity realism plus that precise control. Yeah. That's what matters for enterprise adoption. It pushes the tech out of the cool demo phase and firmly into the workflow. Which I think leads us right to the biggest conceptual jump here, this term that keeps popping up in the sources. Sora 2 as a world simulator. Ah, yes. That sounds like it's doing something much more sophisticated than just, you know, stitching pixels together based on a prompt. What does that actually mean in practice? Yeah, World Simulator, it really marks a conceptual turning point for generative AI. Right. Look, a traditional older model just maps text to image pixels, basically. A World Simulator, even a, let's say, nascent one like Sora 2, shows an implicit sort of rudimentary understanding of physical properties, object permanence within its generated world. Object permanence, like peekaboo. Huh. Well, kind of, but more like the model understanding gravity, momentum, how light reflects off different surfaces, or why an object might be hidden for a moment and then reappear. It's not just pixels. It's a simulated reality, however basic. So it's not just making things look right aesthetically. It's trying to make them act logically correct within its own little physics engine. Is that why, say, a video of glass shattering looks so convincing? Exactly. The model isn't just copying the look of shattering glass, it's attempting to simulate the physics of stress, fracture patterns, inertia, the whole process. And this shift towards world models, it's a major strategic direction. It's not just open AI either. We're seeing competitors like Google with their VO model, Meta2, pushing hard into very similar research territory. Okay, but hold on. If this tech needs massive computational power, doesn't that sort of inherently limit access? Keep it in the hands of the big tech giants. Ah, well, that's perhaps the most disruptive piece of competitive intelligence coming out of the source material. The speed of democratization here is, frankly, terrifying for incumbents. There's this project, Open Source 2.0, an open source effort trying to replicate this level of quality. They showed that a commercial grade video model could potentially be trained for around $200,000. Wait, run that by me again. $200,000. That's... I I mean, that's less than hiring a crew and renting gear for one high-end corporate video shoot in London or New York. Precisely. That kind of cost structure doesn't just lower the barrier to entry, it basically obliterates it. It means smaller, agile startups, if they're well-funded, can potentially achieve quality parity with big studios almost overnight. Wow. This rapid accessibility just ramps up competition massively. The fight shifts away from who has the biggest hardware budget towards who has the advantage in prompt engineering and governance. That's, yeah, uh, that's genuinely fascinating. Okay, so let's peek under the hood then. What's the architectural secret sauce? What allowed Sora 2 to make this huge jump in realism and maybe more importantly, that temporal coherence things staying consistent over time? The sources really highlight two core advancements, and they're both rooted in scaling up techniques that worked really well in large language models, actually. First is the Diffusion Transformer Backbone, or DIT. Okay, for, for listeners maybe not deep in the ML weeds, what does using a transformer, like in ChatGPT, what does that actually change when you apply it to video? It really comes down to memory, context. By using a transformer architecture, the same kind that lets LLMs understand context over long texts or conversations. SOAR 2 can process the video more holistically. It allows the model to capture what they call long-range dependencies. Okay, long-range dependencies. Mm -hmm. Why should, say, a CMO or a creative director care about that specific term? 
Because consistency is brand integrity, right? In earlier models, you might have a character wearing a red shirt, but maybe 50 seconds into a 60 second clip, suddenly it's green or their shadow flickers weirdly, or they grow an extra earring spontaneously. Right, the weird glitches. Exactly. The DIT helps keep the whole narrative visually coherent. It ensures consistency in characters, objects, the whole scene over the video's entire length. It's trying to solve that uh, white whale problem of temporal stability in AI video. That makes the leap much clearer. Okay, what's the second piece of this architectural puzzle? The second part is this really revolutionary use of space-time patches. Space-time patches. Sounds like something from sci-fi. A little. But instead of processing video as just a sequence of individual isolated frames, the model breaks down the video data into these tokens. And these tokens represent both spatial information, like what is this object, and temporal information, how is it changing over time. This unified data structure is what helps the model maintain, again, that stronger object permanence and generate really high resolution video up to a minute long now, which is a huge improvement over its predecessors. Okay, so it sounds like the engineering team really tackled that coherence problem head on. But, you know, every powerful new tech has its limits, things it hasn't quite cracked yet. What's the reality check here? What are the known limitations right now that executive teams absolutely must factor in? Yeah, the critical limitation, and it's a big one, remains the issue of hallucinations, which is, let's be honest, a pretty polite term for physics errors or logical inconsistencies. Okay. This is where the model generates stuff that's just physically implausible or doesn't make logical sense. While it might handle simple physics okay, it can really struggle with complex interactions. It might miscalculate cause and effect or struggle with subtle human interactions, things like that. So even if it looks incredibly real, it might still generate, I don't know, a car driving smoothly on water or yeah. someone catching a ball that clearly passed through a solid wall. Precisely. Or maybe materials behaving strangely, shadows falling the wrong way under complex lighting, things that break the illusion. The key takeaway here for any enterprise user is this huge leap forward does not eliminate the need for human oversight. Absolutely not. You cannot just rely on Sora 2 to generate final, verified content without a human checking it for factual accuracy, physics fidelity, and, of course, brand integrity. That's a really crucial note of caution. Okay, okay let's shift gears a bit. Let's talk value proposition. Yeah. How does the speed, its quality, this realism, how does it translate into actual cash flow? into transforming workflows. We're hearing about production timelines collapsing from weeks down to days. Yeah, the value prop is pretty stark. Radical acceleration of production timelines and cost reduction. So our two fundamentally collapses that traditional linear video production process. You know, pre-production, scouting, filming, post-production, editing. The whole long chain. Exactly. It compresses much of that into a single iterative generation phase. Think about generating complex scenes that used to mean travel, specialized crews, weeks of editing. Now, that process might be confined to hours or perhaps days sitting at a console. This is a massive economic disruption to the entire production supply chain. That completely reframes the budget conversation for a CIO, for a CMO, for anyone managing production costs. Yeah. Let's get specific, though. Where is the ROI most immediate? Which fields are seeing the biggest impact right now? Well, we're seeing immediate and, frankly, profound impact in a few key areas. First, and maybe the most obvious one, is marketing and advertising. Right. Sora 2 enables the creation of hyper-personalized video campaigns at a scale that was just unimaginable before. Imagine needing, say, 50 different versions of an ad tailored to specific regions, time of day, maybe even current weather conditions, or different consumer segments you're targeting. You can potentially generate, A-B test, and deploy all those customized experiences almost instantly. So advertising potentially moves from being this slow, expensive broadcast thing to more of a dynamic, iterative, almost one-to-one -one conversation. That's the potential, absolutely. Second area, Industrial simulation. This is where that world simulator concept really earns its keep. Think about the automotive sector, especially autonomous driving. The model can generate complex, rare, maybe even dangerous traffic scenarios, things that would be impossible or just way too unsafe to stage repeatedly in the real world. Edge cases. Exactly, the edge cases. 
They sometimes call this creating parallel intelligence, basically, a massive synthetic data source to train and validate autonomous systems much faster and safer, de-risking the real-world testing phase. And I remember the source is also mentioning training applications, right? Yes, definitely. For medical and training applications, the potential is there to generate hyper-realistic surgical simulations, for example. This could provide a safe, repeatable, infinitely variable learning environment for doctors or technicians, speeding up skill acquisition without any risk to actual patients. Okay, that's compelling. And finally, maybe for the high-end creative professionals, the value is in that granular control we talked about. Hmm. You can specify really cinematic elements, you know, I need a dolly shot here, or use a shallow depth of field, like you're talking to a DP, mm -hmm. while maintaining that crucial consistency of style and characters throughout a complex professional level project. Okay, this combination of, well, incredible opportunity and pretty disruptive power forces us to pivot now. We have to talk about the strategic and ethical challenges. So if I'm a global executive, maybe about to launch a new product campaign, and I'm considering using Sora too, what's the single most pressing governance issue I need to tackle, like, right now? It's intellectual property and copyright, yeah. full stop. There's no question. The controversy really centers on OpenAI's stated training data model, which is essentially opt-out. Mm -hmm. Meaning copyright holders have to proactively tell OpenAI not to use their material for training, rather than OpenAI seeking explicit permission before using it. Okay, and why is that specific approach so, let's say, dangerous for a large company that needs legal certainty? Because for an enterprise using Sora 2 outputs, this creates, well, considerable controversy and legal uncertainty, as the sources put it. If the video you generate happens to contain elements trained on copyrighted material, even if you didn't know it, and that video infringes someone else's IP, uh -oh. the legal burden, the cost of defense, the potential liability, it likely falls on you, the end user, not necessarily the AI provider. So you absolutely must have a robust internal legal framework to assess and manage the risk of using a tool trained on a data set that could be, let's say, legally fraught. Right. That's a huge consideration. Okay. Beyond potential legal minefield, let's talk about the people side. When production gets automated, or at least augmented at this scale, what's the inevitable impact on the current workforce and what new roles start to emerge? Yeah, this rapid adoption is definitely accelerating what many sources call a pronounced skills gap. We're seeing a really urgent shift in demand. As the machine starts handling more of the routine creative execution, the demand shifts dramatically towards roles focused on, number one, prompt engineering the actual skill of directing the AI effectively to get what you want. The human director, essentially. In a way, yes, but also roles dedicated to AI ethics, governance, legal review, and complex systems integration plugging this into existing workflows. Organizations need a proactive, probably urgent strategy for reskilling and upskilling their talent. They need people who understand both the creative and the technical and the ethical dimensions. Otherwise, they'll get caught short, especially when, you know, surveys show something like 72% of organizations are already integrating AI in some form. 72%. Wow. Okay, so boiling it down, if you're the executive making the call right now, What's the clear, maybe three-step roadmap? What are the non-negotiable next steps to both seize the opportunity and mitigate these significant risks? Okay, first and foremost, treat Sora 2 and tools like it as a strategic asset, not just another piece of software you license. So step one, form a cross-functional task force immediately. Get legal, marketing, IT, maybe HR, product teams, get them in the same room to assess specific applications and the specific risks within your organizational context. They need to make coordinated decisions. Makes sense, break down the silos. Exactly. Step two, develop a robust ethical and legal framework now. Don't wait. This needs to explicitly address copyright exposure, content authenticity, verification, and the very real potential for misuse or generating misinformation. Right, get ahead of it. And step three, initiate pilot projects, but do it in controlled, maybe internal or sandboxed environments first. Start building that institutional knowledge and hands-on expertise. Learn its quirks, its strengths, its failures. Don't, you know, bet your next major public campaign on it right out of the gate, but definitely start learning internally today. That sounds like a very actionable, very critical summary of the strategic imperatives here. Okay, we started this deep dive by saying Sora 2 represents an inflection point, something that fundamentally redefines the economics and the sheer speed of content creation. Yeah, and if we try to connect this to the bigger picture, maybe the most profound takeaway is this. 
As Sora 2 and its successors potentially transition from just being content generation tools towards becoming more like true world simulation engines, mm -hmm. the whole nature of competitive advantage might fundamentally shift. It might not be about who has the biggest physical production budget anymore or even necessarily the biggest server farm. It might become about who can best direct, audit, and govern these increasingly sophisticated, scalable, synthetic digital worlds. That capacity, the ability to command and control high fidelity synthetic reality responsibly, that could very well be the new battleground for digital market leadership. A provocative thought to end on. Directing Synthetic Worlds. Thank you for joining the podcast and see you soon.